Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reapy Ron, and today we're going to be doing another bracket fight. This is between the demo weapons in Killing Floor 2. We're going to be talking about each of them, the pros and cons to each, and then determining which one is the better of the two. I really enjoy doing these videos. You guys seem to enjoy them. So we're going to be doing this with, I think, each of the classes. Uh, maybe with Survivalist eventually. That one will be quite the long list since it's going to include everything. Um, and then maybe we'll just do another one after that that's just all the weapons compared to one another without taking perks into uh, consideration and just looking at how strong the weapons are. But for this time we're looking at demo and right away we've got the HRG Kaboom Stick versus the M32 Multi Grenade Launcher. So out of these weapons the Grenade Launcher will do generally better against large crowds, uh, specifically large crowds of small enemies because it will be easier to launch grenades in there and you get more shots. You get six of them. At close range, the Kaboom Stick is definitely going to win. It will detonate at any range and you can't injure yourself with it. You can injure yourself with the M32 pretty easily because it does have a big explosion radius. The Kaboom Stick will also do more damage per shot and way more damage per second. Uh, you get bonus mobility with the Kaboom Stick. You also have lower weight with the Kaboom Stick. So you have six compared to, I believe, nine with the M32. You could take potentially both of them if you'd like. Boom stick is cheaper, but we're not going to be factoring in price all that much for these. Um, when they're fully upgraded, the Kaboom stick does a crazy amount of damage. The M32 is pretty much locked in where it is. The M32 takes a really long time to reload, and the Boom stick, not as much. This one, I think, is a pretty easy win for the Kaboom stick. I think the M32 is honestly one of uh, Demo's weaker weapons. It's a fun weapon, but not really all that practical for most maps. If you only want to be cleanup crew, then it can be pretty good. But the Kaboom stick's going to be good with everything. So Kaboom stick wins there. Ooh, up next we have a good one. These were all just assorted by random too, so I didn't, I don't know which one's gonna be coming up next. Uh, Seal Squeal versus the M16 M203. Both these weapons are good. Both of them are tier three weapons. Uh, they cost pretty much the same amount. Seal Squeal is a little bit cheaper. Seal Squeal will do more damage per shot because it does hit harder, and the Seal Squeal has a larger explosion radius than the M32. However, the M32 is safer for you because you're less likely to be able to blow yourself up with it, but it does have an arming range, whereas the Seal Squeal can explode at any range. Um, the Seal Squeal can pin enemies down, which can be useful, and you can use the harpoons as a, uh, as a trap to wait for enemies to then blow them up. Both of these actually have pretty good iron sights, although it's much easier to shoot the M16 than it is the Seal Squeal. The Seal Squeal's harpoons drop pretty fast. The M16 has very nice iron sights. I would say for larger targets, the Seal Squeal is better. For smaller targets, the M16 might be better. Uh, it depends how good you are with the Seal Squeal because it has a pretty large explosion radius and you can kill pretty much all small stuff with it without any trouble. You get less shots probably overall with the Seal Squeal than you do with the M16. Um, I mean, like, value-wise, it, it can be argued either way. I think I'd actually give this to the Seal Squeal over the M16. The M16 is a better general purpose weapon and a better backup weapon than the Seal Squeal, but I think the Seal Squeal is a better weapon as a primary weapon. Uh, the M16 is not one of Demo's strongest weapons to be used as a primary. That being said, it's still very good as a primary. It's just not one of the strongest, so I think I'll give this one to the Seal Squeal over the M16, but just barely. Up next, we have the M79 Grenade Launcher versus the RPG. So, the M79 is quite a bit cheaper. It has a larger explosion radius and can probably be better used against crowds than the RPG. Both of these are single-shot weapons, so you don't have to reload each time, although the RPG, I think, takes longer than the... M79, at least it feels like it does. For sights, I'd say they're both pretty comparable. For weight, the RPG does weigh 9, you can't upgrade it once and go to 10, that's pretty heavy. Uh, or you could just keep it the same, which I usually do because it's quite strong as is. The grenade launcher, when it's fully upgraded, does pretty good against crowds, again, and decent against single targets. Uh, again, the grenade launcher is pretty good as a backup weapon, but I don't think it's one of the best weapons. I don't think it's as good as the RPG. I'd give this one to the RPG just because of its raw damage. All right, Pulverizer or C4? This is a cool one too. Uh, pulverizer can make for a really good secondary weapon because you can block and parry with it, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, it's your only weapon that actually makes you tankier. It hits really hard too. Uh, because you do a lot of explosion damage, and this one already has really high explosion damage. It's primary attack 
isn't really all that useful on demo, though. You have a high chance of just knocking enemies down and not killing them, and you swing it slow. So I usually only use this for its heavy attack and for the block and parries, and that's really it. I don't use it for much else. C4, on the other hand, is a fantastic secondary weapon for really any class. It does very high damage. You can blow yourself up with it pretty easily because... You can blow it up at any range and it will do full damage to you, so dying to C4 is not too uncommon. Uh, you do get more C4 with demo than you do the other classes, which is a big bonus for it because uh, C4 is quite valuable. It sticks to targets and you can set it up as traps, which is pretty fun. Uh, you can attach it to people like the Patriarch and the Matriarch, so when they try to take off running, you can blow them up, which is pretty funny too. C4 does way less. C4 only weighs 3. You can't upgrade C4. You can't upgrade the pulverizer but the pulverizer doesn't necessarily need upgrades for demo i think c4 is probably a better alternative than the pulverizer in this case both aren't bad as secondaries kaboom stick versus seal squeal so kaboom stick will do more damage per shot uh, but have less range the seal squeal will beat it in range you get bonus mobility from the kaboom stick both these reload fairly fast both of them are fairly easy to use you don't have to worry about blowing yourself up with the kaboom stick though um, both of them are tier 3 weapons. The Kaboom Stick is more flexible at 6 weight, though. The Seal Squeal at 7 weight is a little bit more difficult to use. So I think I'm going to give this one to the Kaboom Stick. Uh, you also can do... I think... Yeah, you can do more burst damage. Well, maybe. I'm not sure if you can do more burst damage with the Kaboom Stick or with the Seal Squeal. Because if you put 5 Seal Squeals into something and set them all off, they're definitely staggered and probably dead. Uh, and if you blast something with the Kaboom Stick, it's definitely staggered and also probably dead. So they might have the same amount of burst damage uh, potential. But I think I'm going to give it to the Kaboom Stick. A little bit more flexible. RPG or C4? RPG will do more damage. You get more shots with the RPG, but it does way more. The, the C4 is much cheaper. It also uh, weighs quite a bit less. And it can do really high damage, too. It's not all that different from the RPG. They both have similar damage, but you'll do more damage overall with the RPG rockets than you will with the maximum amount of C4. This one I could kind of see going either way, because if you want more flexibility, I would say C4. But if you just want more raw damage, RPG. And since we're doing this based on how good they are as primaries, I think the RPG. The Kaboom Stick versus the RPG. These are two of Demo's best weapons. You have a lot of flexibility, mobility, and really high damage with the Kaboom Stick at close range, as well as you can't blow yourself up. Uh, you can't really hurt yourself all that easily with the RPG, though, either, but you do need an arming range. It has to travel a certain distance for it to blow up, where the Kaboom Stick does not have that. The RPG is also heavier. The RPG will potentially do more damage than the Kaboom Stick. It kind of depends, because... If you're firing both barrels from the Kaboom Stick at very close range, I think you out-damage the RPG shot for shot, assuming you're hitting most of your pellets. So you can do more damage at close range, but the RPG is definitely going to be better at long range. You get more flexibility with the Kaboom Stick, and both these weapons combined are really strong as a uh, weapon combo. That actually might be your strongest weapon combo right there, taking the RPG uh, and then using the Kaboom Stick. Uh, RPG for just big stuff and then Kaboom Stick for everything else. So as a specialized weapon, the RPG I think is a little bit better, potentially, and the Kaboom Stick's probably a better general purpose weapon. So I think I'm going to give this one to the Kaboom Stick. Kaboom Stick is really strong. RPG is really strong though too, so I could see that one being argued either way. Blunderbuss versus the Gravity Imploder. This one's an interesting one, too. The Blunderbuss will do more damage per shot. You get two firing modes with the cannonball and with the shotgun. The shotgun does give you some close range um, defense, so you can uh, kind of stay safe against crawlers and stalkers and stuff. And the secondary fire cannot hurt you. It can also ricochet, which is pretty nice. The primary fire can definitely hurt you. You can blow yourself up with the cannonballs, but the cannonballs do hit very hard. And it doesn't have such an awkward weight, although the gravity imploder doesn't have such an awkward weight either. The gravity imploder is easier to use than the blunderbuss, I would say. Both of its fires work actually pretty similar to the primary fire of the blunderbuss, where you're firing out just a big ball, except for you can't really hurt yourself with the gravity imploder, at least to any real uh, extent. Both are pretty good against crowds, both can work decently well against single targets. The Gravity Imploder can hold single targets in place, but you can pretty much stun lock something to death with the Blunderbuss, so they're both very comparable. This one's really difficult. If you want more damage, I would say Blunderbuss is better. If you want a safer weapon, I'd say the Gravity Imploder is better. And I think since we're going off the assumption that you're not going to blow yourself up, at least as much, I think the Blunderbuss wins here. 
Gravity Imploder could easily win this one, though, too. All right, the Seeker 6 or the Grenade Pistol. The Seeker 6 is honestly not all that great in a lot of the maps in the game. It's a pretty good weapon if you're in a very long map. It's just there's not very many long maps that are available in this game. If you're playing something like Nuked, you can make it work. Uh, if you're playing Zed Landing, you can make it work. But in certain maps, it's just almost unusable as the... Uh, explosive weapon that it should be. So the Seeker 6 has some issues, mostly with the map, not really with the actual gun itself, because lock-on mode is pretty cool. It's really good to use on long-range maps where you can actually use it effectively and be firing out a bunch of rockets that are guaranteed to hit a target, but a lot of maps just don't let you do that. So the Seeker 6 is not one of the stronger weapons for demo. The Grenade Pistol also has some issues though too. It does scale well with upgrades, but it gets kind of heavy, so it makes it a little bit awkward to take another weapon with. Not the most awkward or anything like that. It also usually runs out of ammunition, at least I've found it runs out of ammunition fairly quickly. But it does have some bonuses. It does hit pretty hard and it does scale well with upgrades. It also cannot injure you, which is really good. Um, you can't blow yourself up with it. Out of these two, uh, I think I'm going to give it to the Grenade Pistol, because your Grenade Pistol is always going to be useful, whereas the Seeker 6 can be really useful but isn't always. Uh, and then the Husk Cannon is just moving on because we have an odd number of weapons that are fighting here. Grenade Pistol or Blunderbuss, we get more damage with the Blunderbuss. We probably get a better secondary fire since we get the shotgun mode as opposed to the regular kind of shotgun mode from the Grenade Pistol. The Grenade Pistol does way less and it does cost less to buy, which isn't a huge deal in this ranking. Neither one are particularly hard to match with another weapon. I think this one's probably going to the Blunderbuss. It's quite good. And then we have the Husk Cannon versus the Blunderbuss. Now, this one's interesting. Um, you can do more damage per shot with the Blunderbuss. You can do quite a bit of damage with the uh, Husk Cannon though too. Both weigh a reasonable amount, so they're a little bit difficult to pair with another weapon, but not the hardest. Like either one can be paired with like the M16 or the Kaboom Stick or something like that. So you have options. Husk Cannon has a bit more damage per second, and the Husk Cannon is better at setting off nukes during Zed time. And I think I'm more inclined to go with the Blunderbuss. I kind of like its uh, variety that it gives and the more damage. And then we have our final match, which is the Kaboom Stick versus the Blunderbuss. Blunderbuss could do more damage per shot, although the Kaboom Stick can do more if you fire out both barrels. Um, you do have the secondary fire of the Blunderbuss as well as the secondary fire of the Kaboom Stick. The Kaboom Sticks will give you mo bonus mobility. The Blunderbuss will give you a safe weapon to fight at close range. The Blunderbuss is maybe better against crowds. Both are pretty good against crowds though. The Kaboom Stick is more flexible. You can take more weapons with it than you can with the Blunderbuss. This one again is kind of difficult, but I think it goes to the Kaboom Stick again for its flexibility and it's just crazy amount of damage. So I think the best weapon here is the Kaboom Stick for Demo. Demo has a lot of very interesting weapons, and you can make arguments for quite a few of them for being quite good. Uh, demo weapons are probably some of the funnest weapons in the entire game. I don't think they have really a boring weapon. So uh, yeah, next time, I'm not sure what class we're going to be looking at. Tell me what you guys would like to see next. Uh, which class's weapons will go head to head and eventually I think we're going to be doing like all the weapons against one another Which should be really fun, too Thanks for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it If you guys did and you're not subscribed be sure that you get subscribed that way you get notifications whenever these videos come out If you'd like to support the channel in other ways you can by going down to the links down in the description uh, Either to my merch store to buy merch if you would like uh, Go over to the patreon if you'd like early access to some of these videos and your name up on this board here as well as um if you would like to be on this board, you could also join the YouTube membership program. Every level gives you that as well as bonuses too. Thank you guys all for watching this. I really do appreciate it. And I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye.